right, everyone. Thank you all very much for coming. I really appreciate it. If you want to gather around, we're going to kick off our interview uh, with Mr. John Deal of The Deal Company. Um, thank you all for being here, number one. I appreciate it. I know we start right at 5 or 5-ish five when we can, and it's hard to get here, but I appreciate it. Um, this is a really amazing project, John. The silos, um, it does two great things. It's, it's an adaptive reuse project, but it also showcase independent artists as well. So I think it's a great thing for Houston, and, and I like how you are so focused on adaptive reuse. But before we get into that, why don't we hear a little bit about your history, uh, who you are, and uh, kind of along those lines, you know, you went to UT for business, but then you got into real estate, you did a little bit of multifamily before we got into adaptive reuse. So tell us a little bit about your history and kind of what, what yeah, helped so us get I'm, here. Yeah, I'm, so I'm a native Houstonian, went to Lamar High School, University of Texas in Austin. Uh, got out of school at a tough time uh, in early 90s, uh, went to the workforce and wanted to be a developer, but that wasn't happening in the 90s. Still suffering from the crash of the 80s. And so uh, went to work as a commercial real estate appraiser and started making small investments and small investments turned into large investments. And, uh, you know, we moved into repurposing uh, old structure. We were doing multifamily units inside the loop, you know, small 10, 20, 30 unit complexes. And we were, we were going beyond what other guys were doing. We were actually gutting them down to the framing and all new underground infrastructure, all new infrastructure inside. This is and the nineties. This is in the nineties. Yeah. And the market moved away from us in early 2000s. A lot of money was from dot com era it was coming from California and it moved the cap rates down and we moved into a different product, which was repurposing old structure. Okay, I, I love that. Um, it's, it's interesting to hear because of the market, you moved into adaptive reuse. Uh, obviously, you know, you know the market very well, but it seems like adaptive reuse would be extremely hard and yeah. difficult to do and a lot of surprises when you get in there. So tell us where it came from and how you got into adaptive reuse and how you made it work. Because I think it's a hard thing. Yeah. And we want to see more of that in Houston. I think we're yeah. used to bulldozing and building new, so it's cool to see more adaptive It's incredibly use. challenging. You must have either done it yourself or interviewed somebody who has, because it's not like building something new. Building something new, it's all on paper. It fits, right? You know, unless somebody makes a, you know, the, the production process, unless something's made wrong, it, it fits, right? Yeah. Well, in a building like this, I mean, there were surprises daily in this building, because you buy these buildings, they're full of equipment, you can't see portions of the building, and, you know, unless you unless you reverse engineer and reverse design the entire building, there's things that just don't fit, you know, that you have on paper. And so it, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to build something new relative to repurposing an old structure. Yeah, yeah. well, we're glad you, you were yeah. able to make it work. Um, yeah, and we've done it many, many times. We enjoy, we enjoy each and every project. Yeah, yeah, I know you have quite a few properties in Houston. Um, it seems like kind of concentrated along the Washington corridor, but you also have stuff on the east side. You have stuff in River Oaks. You have a little bit in the Heights. Mm -hmm. Is it, do you kind of build and work where you want to work or is it more driven by the asset that's available? I mean, I'm sure it's some sort of combination maybe. Tell, tell us about that, but you yeah, definitely yeah. concentrate along Washington Avenue. Yeah, it, it, it's a combination. Uh, you know, when we were doing small multifamily, we were in the Montrose area and uh, extended over towards the gallery area but you know when we got into the old buildings I mean this is where the old buildings are right and so we started in this Washington Avenue area and and when we thought we had made all the acquisitions we could make over here we moved to the east end and and then it became just opportunity you know we had deals that would come to us off market you know really cool old buildings and and folks that wanted to sell them that knew we would perform and you know, so we've ended up with some really fantastic old structure. A lot of it in inventory right now. And we have three or 400,000 square feet of existing structure that's just mothballed right now. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at all those. They're all beautiful. Yeah. I went to the site and I looked at, the, at them. So are you mainly trying to look at retail assets? I mean, office assets or condos as well? I mean, I think no. I saw a cheek meal coffee building yeah, is, that a, we have, is that a rental or yeah. is that for sale condos on the east side so we have one residential property left it's an art deco 32 unit multifamily project over in the museum district 
uh, built by uh, William Hobby, who was a former governor of Texas. Really cool property. And uh, that's the last. We weren't going to sell it. When we sold our other multifamily stuff, we hung on to that. Nice. And, and we moved into this creative use stuff. And so, you know, yeah, we've done some retail. The buildings we own over in River Oaks on West Timer were just an opportunity. I mean, it, it, it really... It was fun. I mean, there were old yeah. buildings, and you know, we put our mark on one of them actually by, you know, taking off all that had covered up what was the original structure nice. on 37, 35 Westheimer, which is it's the like area just outside building. of Lower yeah. Westheimer, I believe. Like no, it's over Westheimer. off of Westland. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Yeah. So we did those buildings, but most of what we do, uh, you know, are larger structures. Although we've got small ones scattered here and there, but creative users. So we like to, we like to rent to large companies, small companies, individuals who are creative minded. It, it just seems to be a great fit for our product. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. We need, I mean, that's fantastic. We love seeing, you know, giving entrepreneurs a cool space to, to do their thing. Yeah, so we've got fantastic. tons of them. I mean, this, this is a really cool office space right here. And this is a software company out of Austin. And, uh, you know, we enjoy having them in the building. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So tell us a little bit about the silos specifically. When did this project start? What did it take? We also have the amazing silos that I think we're going to be able to see when we go inside. There's uh, the, the, the bottom is, is a site-specific gallery, a code-approved gallery through the city of Houston, believe it or not. I thought y'all just didn't even use it. I didn't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's gallery space down there. But it's, it's, it, it's the bottom of the silos. I mean, it's, I don't know what one would expect, but it's, awesome. it's, it's the bottom of the silos. Great. But there is artwork down there. It's all site-specific. We do three exhibitions a year out of there. There's Sculpture Month, and then there's, I think U of H does one, and this is done by Redbud Gallery, uh, Gus Capriva. He may be in here. Did he walk in? No, I don't see him. Uh, so he's, I think he's down there waiting, or somebody's waiting for us, so we'll get okay. to see the bottom of the silos. I mean, no, no hurry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, perfect, perfect. Well, I think we just have a, one, or, one more question before we get started with a couple of questions from the audience, but um, I know that you know, what are, what are your, a couple of your favorite projects that you've done, I guess? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I keep, every, the next one I do is always my favorite. It's always my favorite. But then I reflect back, you know, and Forever Spring was my favorite. And then, then 2500 was, was my favorite. And, yeah. of course, the silos is, is the silos. It doesn't match up to any of them. It's, it's, it's one of the coolest. It's growth yeah. around yeah, here yeah, since yeah. this thing has opened. Yeah. It's insane. Well, we're, yeah, I mean, it's, it, we, you know, we sort of just lucked into the area. I mean, we're the first to start redeveloping stuff in this little pocket. There was one townhome over here, one newly built townhome when we started Winter Street in 2004. And, uh, you know, look at the rest. So now. we've, yeah, I mean, we've created all this energy and, you know, the apartment guys call it the hottest development market in the city right They're now. going and up like crazy. There's 2,200 units that either have been delivered or will be delivered within the eight, next 18 months within a quarter mile of where we're sitting. Yeah, that's got to be fun that's, to that's see. That's a lot. To spur yeah. all of that. That's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Be a part of it, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, with that, I want to ask you a question about, I was on your site, I saw a super cool project. I saw you have a lot of land near St. Arnold's. Uh, I think it's a, a project that's a little bit ways out, but tell us a little bit about, I think it's 2103 Lions Avenue. Yeah, that was an acquisition we made during COVID. We were really off the market deal. The sellers, they had had it on the market in 18 and 19 and didn't sell. And either event during COVID, they came to us. Really cool project, uh, built in 1917, uh, Moncrief Lenore Sheet Metal and Roofing Supply Company. Uh, really great, great two timber structures and uh, some metal additions, about 140,000 square feet on seven acres. And we've got, we've got a pretty cool project planned for that. That's going to be awesome. Let's start the tour.